Hi, my name is Lorraine Yazi. It used to be Lorraine Williams, but I'm now a Yazi. Um, this is one of the potteries that I made. It has um, geometric designs, or should I say rug designs, with the A's around it. Um, it took me about a couple weeks to finish it. I just fired it today, or actually this morning, um, since it was really light and thin when I was building it. Um, I got it fired, took it out of the firing, and since it was as thin as it is, I figured, okay, it cooled down already. So I got my pitch, pinion pitch, or tree set, and I started to go around inside it, and I guess it was still really, really hot. And since my hand don't have that heat thingy anymore, because I've worked with potteries for about 30, two, three years. Anyway, I was going around inside my pot and all of a sudden the fire exploded. <laughs> the pitch that was already inside it was burning and my granddaughter ran for the door. <laughs> my sister was over there yelling and we, I was trying to suffocate the fire and we got it to go out and so I had to start all over and start pitching again. And you see some fire scale here. I try not to do fire scales, but a lot of times it's unpreventable. Um, it, you get it during the firing, so I try not to get fire scales on the, most of my pots. So now I got a burnt hand, but I'm still working. How do you start collecting the dish? <laughs> I collect pitch from pinion trees. Um, summertime is a good time to go because that's when you get the real clear, the real clean ones on the trees. Wintertime are the ones that you find only on the ground because the one on the trees aren't melting and there's not very much clean ones on the trees. So winter, um, summertime is a good time and I have a good story for that one too. Anyway, one day I went collecting pinion pitch and I'm one of those um, G.I. Janes, I guess you would call. So there's all this pitch way up there on the tree. I decided I'm going to get that pitch. It was clean, it was good, and there was a lot up there. So I started climbing the tree. I got up on top, I got the pitch, but before I could get down, the branch that I was standing on broke and I fell through all those branches that I had just climbed and that there was a hill that that was just a little ways from where I was climbing and I rolled all the way down the to the to the bottom of the arroyo and my niece my sister's kid was with me and she started rolling with me. She goes, okay, auntie, let's go back up there and roll back down again. You know, <laughs> she thought we were playing. But anyway, we did that and the next day I had cleaned the pitch, did my pottery, pitched it, and we went to um, Grand Canyon and we took a route towards Page. And when we were headed towards Page, we stopped and all of a sudden my neck was hurting and so I got out, stretched and then got back in the car and pretty soon I couldn't move my neck. I was, my neck was getting stiff and we got to Paige. By the time we got to Paige I couldn't move. So I had to sort of like scoot out of the car, go into the emergency room and I ended up in the emergency room and the doctor came in and my niece was sitting beside me and he was okay where was she climbing and where did she fall out of the tree and I said it's not her it's me <laughs> I'm the one that fell out of the tree so I thought that was something <laughs> but I'm always you know I'm always I'm always going to be a kid Oh, clay. Where get the clay? I get the clay from Cal Springs. I learned how to make potteries from my um, mother-in-law. Um, 
I don't know, 30 some odd years, maybe almost 40 years ago, I married into the Williams family. And when I went to go see her, her name is Rose Williams. She's one of the old potters. She's, I think, 98 years old now. Anyway, she used to make potteries, and I used to sit there and watch. All the time that um, I knew about potteries, and they had them it's in ceremonial, and they were always using them, I never knew where it came from. I really never actually thought Navajos made potteries. Sorry to say, but I never did. And I asked, where does the pottery come from? And then they asked me, my mother-in-law asked me, where did you think it came from? I said, well, I thought it came from Mexico. So that's where I thought potter potteries came from. Of course, some of it does, but not the traditional pottery. And I, and I guess my my mother-in-law's family had always been into potteries. So um, I just watched her. I never had any interest in it, in to, into doing it. I was interested in watching her, but not not doing it. So one day she told me that you know, you know this clump of clay right here, you can turn it green. It, it will turn green. I never, I never got it, and I was like, green, you know, does it, does it get, does it spoil, does it get ugly, you know, if it sits too long, but later on, she gave me that clay, and she goes, here, you, you can do it, start learning, start making it, you can have a house, you can have a car, you can raise your family with this clay, and that's what I did, so she gave, gives me the clay, and I did it for maybe, a good year, but I still didn't get into it. And then years later, maybe four or five years later, I got bored one day at home and I thought, oh yeah, she taught me how to make pottery, so I'm going to start doing it again. So I started doing it and come to find out that every, all my in-laws did potteries. And I did not want to be competing with my in-laws. So I decided that, okay, I want to do something different. So that's how I came up with designs. That's how I came up with all kinds of designs. I started looking at the rugs. I started looking at other things. And um, I've done a lot of different things with the potteries. Um, I try to change shapes. I try, and I try not to do what everybody else does. Like I said, I'm always trying to be different. Yes, um, the pottery is coil. Um, you try to brush it when you're filling it. Brush it with a corn cob so that it's kind of like rough where you're going to add the next coil and you just coil it all the way around. And then you brush it out with the corn cob so that um, it'll stick together. Once in a while, you know, where you coil it, it might not stick together. So during the firing, the fire will pick it apart. So <clears throat> when you're building it up, you try to brush it out with the corn cob and get it to stick together. Um, and then um, I use plastic bottles or old Alka-Saucer bottles to smooth it out as best as I can and then after it's all smoothed out then I use my hand again but my hands no longer smooth it's really rough so when I do that in I start marking it and then I go over it again with um, a rough stone sort of like polish it to where that I can you know get it smooth enough I'll draw on it I'll put all these designs on it while it's still wet then when I it starts to dry just enough to where that you can um, start polishing it. Then I start polishing it with river stones. And when I'm done with the river stone, then I let it dry. And the red stuff that you see here underneath is a red slip. Um, the slip I got from the Pueblos. So they, um, they use a lot of these on their potteries and the designs. The paint I use um, just regular ceramic paint. Before I used to use the um, pigments. 
Um, it does not stay on as good as the ceramic paint does because they burn off real easy. And of course, um, a lot of the pigments that are used with the traditional stuff, it is used for body paint. Um, when you have a ceremony going on, they do body paint. And I was told that, you know, you're not supposed to burn it since it's for the body. Maybe that's why I got burnt. <laughs> I don't know. <clears throat> a lot of superstition that goes on. But um, try to stay natural so that um, I don't get in trouble with anybody. Um, there are people that are going to question you, especially elderly, about a lot of the things that you put on your pottery. And to avoid any confrontation with anybody, I try to stay simple and stay um, Excuse me, but stay white <laughs> so that I don't put too much traditional stuff on there. I try to, to stay, you know, updated. Teaching her? She's, um, they're learning. I have one older daughter, granddaughter. Her name is Raven. She's doing it a lot. She's um, pretty much known now. She's in. Um, her stuff is in the museum in Tucson. Um, she beat me one year. She took um, best in category, and she never lived, let me live it down. She always said, oh, I beat you, Grandma, I did. Yeah, but she does potteries. Um, she likes to do the competition, like in Window Rock and um, Gala. Um, right now, she's doing mostly her schooling, so hopefully later on she'll get into it. And she's about the only one that's taken up after me, and I'm hoping that these other little ones will get into it. Right now, to them, it's just games. It's just mud pies and stuff right now, but hopefully they get into it like Raven did. Mm -hmm. so tell us a little bit about when you went to Europe with your body. <laughs> I was asked once to go to um, um, Morocco. Morocco to me was um, New Orleans. Why I thought mm, Morocco was in New Orleans, I have no idea. But I was invited and they said there's a museum or a curio shop out there and since a lot of the potteries that I do look look like um, I don't know African made um, a lot of the stuff that is done over there is done with wood it's not pottery it's made out of wood so I'm always asked if my pottery is made out of wood and more than more than enough, you know. They just still say, "Is this is this wood?" And you'll say, "No, it's pottery." And so they have to come in, you know. They have to fill around, make sure it's it's pottery. So we went out there one year, and we left the airport and thinking I'm gonna be in New Orleans. It was a longer flight than I had expected. We got there, chaos and whatnot, and I'm not used to things like that. And the minute we landed, a lot of stuff was going on. And I was like, no, I want to go home now. I want to go home. I have to go home. I don't want to be here. You know, we stayed there for a few days, and since all, a lot of, I don't know, I don't know what goes on, and I really don't know what was going on, but I wanted to get out of there as soon as I can. I know a lot of people say that you're lucky you get to go places, but you know what? It's not luck. It's not lucky when there's a lot of stuff going on, a lot of crazy things, a lot of scary things. And I am so glad I'm an American and an American Indian. <laughs> but things are as complicated as it is, as a lot of people would think. You know, we may not have a lot of the stuff that they have in, in town or in the cities, but I am very glad I live in Sweetwater, Arizona, where there is no chaos. I know we don't have a gas station in nearby. I know we don't have a grocery store nearby, but I am so thankful for it. 
Um, I have the freedom to sit outside in the middle of the night, two, three o'clock in the morning without having to think, okay, there's going to be a drive-by. Okay, this next door, they're going to be having another drug party or, you know, things like that. I am so lucky, I'm so lucky that I live in Sweetwater, Arizona. If you know where Sweetwater, Arizona, you're not going to think you're lucky if you live always live in your life in the city because there's nothing out there. We don't even have a highway. It takes one hour to get on a 15-mile stretch road, and that's how bad our roads are. So I think, I think I'm lucky. I think I'm fortunate to live where I live, and I'm glad I know how to do pottery because it's gotten me a lot of places. I've been, I think, in almost all 50 states except for maybe two states I have never been in but it's taken me a lot of places, places that a lot of the my neighbors probably would never see. Maybe, I don't know, more than half of the Navajos might never see. But um, I'm just, I just know I'm lucky that my mother-in-law taught me how to do potteries. And thanks to her, I took her to New Jersey with me. I wanted her to see what the East looked like. We just tell her about the East, you know, back East. She always just thought, how far can the East be? But we took her out there one year. We took her all the way to New Jersey. We took her to the Taj Mahal. And one thing that I never knew about my mother-in-law was she was afraid of heights. We got to somewhere in, in Texas, and we pull over to spend the night, and it was a high rise, and it was only on the outside where the um, elevators, you get off the elevators and you had to go on the outside, and she was so scared, she was just hanging on to the walls, and I had no idea, she was afraid of the heights, I just went in drop everything off in there and was sitting there and here she was out there scared to death and so we went back out there and she was hanging on to the walls and that's when we found out she was afraid of heights but other than that my mother-in-law is a sweet lady um, she's 98 like I said I'm not sure if she's still doing potteries but she's still at home still being Mrs. Williams <laughs> Do you hear stories about her hitchhiking when she was in her nine? Oh, she, she still hitchhikes. She still hitchhikes. She likes to go to the flea market. Um, she hitchhikes to Kayenta to the flea market. She hitchhikes to Tuba City to the flea market. Just so that, you know, she could see people that she knows. Um, but right now, I have, I'm not sure what she does, but just this past um, fall, um, we went and took her to Tuba City Fair, but how much of it she saw, I don't know, because she slept most of the time. And we, me, uh, my, my kids and my grandkids, we picked up their grandma and we took them for a drive, took her for a drive out there. And she loves chicken, so we took her to KFC. <laughs> Um, that's pretty much me, I guess.